Warrior family, what's up? I'm Brock Lynn. Today on Pasco Kings, we're going over the ins and outs of traveling in and out of Cuba. Engage. Welcome aboard, abroad. A lot of people are getting mixed messages about how to get to Cuba. So this little guide that I created right here is going to guide you along the way. Things to know about booking your trip to Cuba. Travel to Cuba is available for authorized travelers only. The Cuban Assets Control Regulations, administered by the Office of Foreign Assets Control of the U.S. Department of Treasury, authorizes only certain categories of travelers to travel to Cuba. Tourism is not yet permitted. All passengers traveling on United Vacations to and from Cuba must certify their eligibility under one of the authorized categories. So go to the U.S. Department of Treasury's OFAC FAQ page for more information. So here are permitted reasons for travel. When you book your vacation and or check in for your flight, you will be asked to certify the reason for your visit. There are currently two ways to gain permission to travel to Cuba. With a general license or with a specific license. See more details under the Cuba travel certification within the checkout process. If you meet the regulations and conditions of general license, you will not need to apply for a specific license. There are 13 categories of general licenses related to Cuba travel. Number one, educational activities or people-to-people -people exchanges. Number two, family visits. Three, official government business. Four, journalistic activity. Five, professional research or meetings. Six, religious activities. Seven, sports and public events. 8. Support for Cuban people 9. Humanitarian projects 10. Research 11. Informational materials 12. Authorized export activities 13. Non-immigrant Cuban national You will not qualify for a general license if the reason for your travel is not listed above and you will be required to apply for a specific license from the U.S. Office of Foreign Assets Control all license applications are reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. Keeping documents on file. As a licensed traveler, you are obligated to retain all records relating to your travel to Cuba for a period of five years. Health insurance requirements. All visitors are required to have health insurance that is accepted in Cuba. In most cases, health or travel insurance policies issued in the United States are not accepted at medical facilities in Cuba. So United has included Cuban health insurance in the total cost of your ticket. Cuban health insurance is provided by ESICUBA and is valid for 30 days. If you are staying in Cuba beyond 30 days, you need to purchase additional insurance to cover the remainder of your stay. Travel document requirements. If you have a valid Cuban passport or if your passport reflects that you were born in Cuba, please refer to the Cuban Consulate website for details on additional documents you must hold in addition to your passport. Please note, it may take several weeks to obtain all necessary documents from the Cuban Consulate. All other customers will need to obtain a Cuban entry permit, a tourist card, or a Cuban visa before travel. You must also have a valid passport and two blank pages for entry and exit stamps. Cuban Entry Permit or Tourist Card So what is a Cuban Entry Permit or Tourist Card? Most customers traveling under a general license will only need a Cuban Entry Permit, available for purchase at the airport. In Houston and New York and Newark, Cuban Entry Permits are sold at the departure gate and collect payment before you board. You will need your passport, boarding pass, and a major credit card to make your purchase. A Cuban entry permit costs 50 bucks per person and is not included in the price of your airline ticket. The entry permit is valid for a single entry and allows the holder to stay in Cuba for up to 30 days. Cuban visa issued by the consulate. If the reason for your travel isn't covered by a Cuban entry permit, you will need a visa issued by the Cuban consulate in Washington, D.C. So visit the Embassy of Cuba in USA website for more information. Please contact the Cuban consulate in Washington, D.C. 
well in advance of your flight if you have questions determining which type of visa you will need for your travels. All right, y'all, so here's some helpful hints to travel to Cuba. Bring plenty of cash, more than you think you need. Most credit cards are not accepted. Travelers should check with their financial institution to determine if their card will be accepted and notify of international travel. Traveler's checks may also be difficult to cash while in Cuba and are also not recommended. If you have access to euros, that would be the best cash to carry as you will pay much less in exchange fees than US dollars. Hotels and resorts usually have a bureau de change. You will need your passport to exchange money. In Cuba, they will not accept bills that are torn or written on when exchanging into CUC. When exchanging money to CUC, try to get small denominations to make purchases easier. As many places such as small stores, bars, and restaurants do not always have the possibility to break down larger bills for you. There are two currencies in Cuba. You will exchange for and use convertible pesos, CUC. Be aware of the other currency, the national peso, CUP, when looking at the cost of food and souvenirs. Make sure to ask for the prices in CUC so you will know exactly what you will be paying. Also, make sure you are getting back the correct change in the right currency when making purchases. You should always check that your tourist card is stamped before departure in the United States. If it has not been stamped, you will have to wait in line at Cuban Immigration for a new one to be issued, which you will have to pay for. The reverse side of the tourist card does say it is invalid without stamp of ensuing entity. Technology, phone service, and or Wi-Fi is difficult to find in Cuba. Print and take any travel documents, reservations, insurance, or other information you need before leaving. Along those lines, most US cell phones do not work in Cuba, even if you have an international plan. However, some US carriers are starting to allow users to call and text through their international rate plans. It's best to check with your carrier to see if your phone with your plan will work in Cuba before your trip. Some travelers opt to temporarily rent a mobile phone during their visit to Cuba, as calls on landlines are very expensive. Don't drink the water, buy bottled water. Be prepared with toilet paper and small coins when using public facilities. The official language of Cuba is Spanish. You can import up to $400 worth of goods from Cuba, including up to 100 in tobacco and alcohol products. Make sure to keep your receipts. All merchandise brought back must be for personal use only. The standard electric current is 220 volts. Occasionally, you will find hotels with 110 volts and that can accept US plugs. It is advisable to bring voltage and plug converters if your electronics are not travel ready. All right, lastly, we're gonna go over what to bring. One, bug spray. Two, sunscreen and sun hats. Three, comfortable clothing and walking shoes. Four, medications and over-the-counter drugs, band-aids, etc. Five, cash. Credit card and ATM machines are not yet readily available. Six, small gifts for children and locals, depending on itinerary. For example, school supplies, small toys, candy, art supplies, band-aids, over-the-counter drugs, sunglasses, hand sanitizer, washcloths, which are not provided at most hotels. And lastly, toilet paper. Good to have your own at public restrooms. Other than that, be ready to have a incredible time in Cuba, and I hope to see you there. So when you get to the airport to buy your flight to Cuba, don't be confused. Be completely in the know, like a king of passport kings. Peace. Did you like this episode? Great, remember to leave comments below. Subscribe and like and share it with your social media. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you want to make money online or just book a trip, go to www.passportkings.com and pick up our free book while you're there. This episode of Passport Kings is brought to you by the most exciting opportunity that is currently taking the world by storm. 
The combination of planet marketing and IntelliTravel gives you the ability to make money in your very own travel business. Become an independent travel agent. Making big money in this $8 trillion business is easy once you learn the basics, travel at deep discounts, and become an expert of exotic locations. Check out more information at www.passportkings.com slash become travel agent and start down the road of living your exotic travel dreams while making the money that it takes to do it.